Mm. Let's talk about body image real quick because you are a model and mm-hmm. I know that's a massive thing in that industry is body image, especially for women, right? Because obviously you've got male models too, but for women, it's like, how do I look? Mm. And w- what was that like being in that world and being so conscious about how you look? Because you get validated from how you look. Yeah. Let me tell you, models are one of the most insecure people in the world because of that reason. It can be very toxic if you do not have a strong sense of self and can get wrapped up in that world. Um, Fortunately, I think that I was lucky enough to be of the generation of modeling where change started to happen. Instagram, social media really um, propelled the change that the consumer wanted to see in representation, right? Mm -hmm. We asked for more body types. We asked for different skin tones. And in the last 10 years, because of social media, brands have had to listen and conform. And now we're seeing all sorts of Benetton ads across the world, right? Mm. Um, uh, But when I started, I was sort of at that cusp of that old traditional sense. Um, And then I witnessed and was part of it when it changed. So I I think that I was quite fortunate that I didn't get too wrapped up in it because I caught the wave of more representation. But at the beginning, it definitely did get to me on some days. And of course it would. You know, I was a young, impressionable girl. Yeah. How do you deal with it now, though? Um, I educated myself on sports science, body science, like nutrition, my hormones. Um, I just learned the facts of how my body worked. And I learned very deeply about nutrition. And once I changed my relationship with food and noticed that it's not like, you know, you don't eat to be full, you eat to nourish yourself. Mm. It changed everything for me. Once Mm. I started lifting weights and started to realize what my body is capable of doing as a machine, as a tool, it changed everything for me because I was changing my mindset of this is what my body looks like to this is what my body can do. Mm. And it was the healthiest thing I've ever done for myself. Yeah. So learning about nutrition Mm -hmm. as a model Mm. helped you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And changing your relationship with food. Changed my relationship with food. Learning about my hormones changed my relationship with Mm. my mental health and my physical health. And weightlifting, powerlifting changed so much for me as well um, with both mental health and, and physical image health and everything. Yeah. So what what were the, when you think about it now, when you, when you started that, when you think back to it, what were the things that, I mean, I know you mentioned what you did, but how did that actually affect how you thought about what you did? Oh, you, you never saw your image as good. Um, you would, I mean, for me, it would, it would come, it would come up in like nitpicking small things. Like look at the size of my arm. Look at me when I stand sideways, any, excuse my um, inner critic had to pick apart my body, it would, it would go hard. Um, yeah. And it was a really, it, it got to points where it was really dark, but fortunately I had other things going on in my life, um, a good support system uh, that stopped me from going completely into the negative thoughts around body image. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Cause it can get quite depressing, right? If you're Whole, your whole life is predicated on how you look. Mm-hmm. And I would be lying if I said that that's not solved yet. I mean, there are still moments where I would see a picture of myself and like that inner critic will come and try and make a mean comment. But the difference is now that I catch it and mm-hmm. I know better. Yeah. Yeah. It's like me too. I, I mean, <laughs> in the fitness space, I, I do that too. Like I post a picture, I'm like, uh, no, nah, I should have sucked my belly in a bit more. <laughs> you know, right? Like stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. But now we know better, right? right but right. the voice doesn't really stop, huh? It just, no, you just, it doesn't stop. Your voice gets stronger. Yes. I think that's it. Yeah, exactly. And you know, learn how to deal with it better too. Mm-hmm. So you don't judge, you don't judge it when the voice comes up. It's like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I had a cake that day or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Another thing that used to fuck with me in the modeling industry was that they would Photoshop me all the time when you're doing editorials, that's just what they did. Right. And I would get to points where I would do a shoot and I would feel good about it. And then I'd wait for the magazine to come out and I would not even recognize the version of myself staring back at me. Mm. And that can really fuck with a young girl's head because it's like, you weren't good enough. We had to change you. Mm. Yeah. You know? Right. And you get so used to seeing yourself through other people's perception through this Photoshop lens that suddenly your true image of yourself in the mirror starts to get very warped 
because you're like, obviously I'm not good enough. And you start to truly, you can start to truly believe that message. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very damaging story, right? It's like, obviously I'm not good enough because if I was, they wouldn't have they wouldn't edited need, my photo. Yeah. They would lighten my skin. Yeah. And they, I mean, that's the Asian beauty standard back then as well. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. They would make me fair. They would make me skinnier, which was really, I was like, I was so thin. I was, I had the 19 year old gold metabolism and I was, mm. you know, the athletic body type that I am. I was already thin. And yet they would Photoshop me even more. They would make my face skinnier. It was very weird. They once photoshopped my nose. I was like, why would you? <laughs> That's the last thing that I'm thinking about that needs changing. <laughs> it was so weird. Um, yeah, I guess you also then need to have a good acceptance that it's not me, it's them. Mm. Yeah. But in the in the modeling age, industry, what you just touched on there is that the, I've met so many women in my life who say that they want to lose weight mm. and they're already slim. And I think, I, I can't help but think it's a disease of thinking to think that mm. you're already you're already skinny, but you want to be even more skinny. Oh, yeah. Just so you can be accepted by, by who? Yeah, yeah. It's because they're told that that is what beauty is. And it, it's just, it, it can get so toxic. That whole Pandora's box of talking about society's standards of women's beauty and how it's perceived back then when I was modeling in the magazines and editorial and how it's not translated, but gotten even worse yeah. now on Instagram, that Pandora's box is so deep, dude. Mm. It, it can go on forever. Yeah, and actually, as we were saying this, one of the things that Emile's mom, she's a psychologist, she said, um, we live in the land of not enough. We live in the world of not enough. Mm -hmm. So like Instagram is literally like the world of not enough. Mm. And we see all these people that have been photoshopped and we think it's real. And the, the, the sad thing is all these models that are coming up in the space, they think that that's the, the, that's the, the bar, right? It's like, I need to look like her. But she, that doesn't, that's not how she looks. That's not even how she looks like. <laughs> exactly. It's so messed up. <laughs> Do you talk about this on your podcast? All the time. Yeah. But I also talk about how I have days where I hate my body because mm. we're we, women or man, we all go through those days. Mm. I talk about the days where I stand sideways and I literally look like I'm four months pregnant. And then I, got <laughs> and then I need to remind myself that my period is coming and I'm water I retained. It's just, I talk so openly mm. about my body image perception and and society's perception mm. that to be honest my listeners probably are like we get it <laughs> yeah yeah 